Welcome to a brand new episode of Skillet's World, and I am joined here today by the Mac of the Mouth, aka Melanin Gibson, aka Liability Jones, rapper turned wrestler, the one and only Kale. What's up, bro? Thank you for, thank you for joining me, my bro. No, thanks for having me, bro. No, thank you, man. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> like now, but oh, thank you. But no, but thank you all. It, it's, it's funny because uh, we're both rappers who've kind of, in some different ways, mingled in the wrestling world. And, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people from that world who know of my work and know of your work uh, wouldn't know that you and I have a, a friendship that that's surpasses all of that. Oh, yeah, we yeah, all yeah. come from music, and I've known you for a very long, long time. Yeah. Um, but uh, I say all that to say I'm proud of what you're doing, bro. I appreciate that. Like, what made you want to like pursue a career in wrestling? I'm, I'm, I, know, I know you've been a lifelong fan of the art of wrestling, but uh, what, what, what was that? What was the moment when you were like, you know what? I think I can just give it a go. Well, it's just like I think like my cousin got me like back into like proper watching, and I was just like, you know, man, I'm just I'm just watching. It. I'm like, can I do that? I'm like, I've got like. You know, disregard for my own safety. <laughs> I like being the centre of attention. I like chatting shit. Well, I could probably try this. I right. could, yeah, I, mean, I could try this. And right. so I was like, clickety clackety, like trying to figure out like online. And it was just, but it's like, it took ages because it was like everything was like in Kent. So, I was like, fun that, fun yeah. that. But you know, found one. But if I, you know, but then you know, finding ones in like London makes it easier. Now I'm like the one in uh, Edmonton. It's just. It's easy. It's easy yeah. to get, you know what I mean? Get a hustle. It's, uh, when, you go, when you can't drive, <laughs> it yeah. becomes limited, you know what I mean? Okay. But yeah. Just, it just, you know, I've wanted a challenge. And I figured, let's challenge myself. Good. And then, just, you know, became addictive. How long, you, how long have you been doing wrestling training and, 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 and wrestling in itself, like in the ring? And uh, on off a few years. I was like, I had like nine months when I was out because I fucking popped a disc in my neck and I was I uh, remember you telling me about yeah and I was just like I did I was just I was going on like it was um like I had a stiff neck so I was like for six months I going ah that's a bit tight ah that's a bit tight and then yeah my pal my pal was like a was an osteopath and he just like looked at my neck I was like dude your spine is coming out <laughs> it was great it was great I was turning like Michael Keaton for everything he'd be like how you doing <laughs> not bad pal <laughs> The mask on, yeah. Oh yeah, just, just, <laughs> there was no ambi turning. It was all just, had to get full eye contact with someone. The core was strong at that point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. And then, but you, you know, even because a lot of people will go through something like that, kind of horrific injury like that or something like where you're, you know, part of your spine's kind of popping out of your neck and, and be like, you know what, this ain't for me. You know, maybe, you know, I've done a brief little stint of wrestling training for a music video. Mm. And even with that, I was a bit like, oh, this is a bit nuts. Like, <laughs> like, like, did you ever have any doubts of like, mm, is this really for me? Or did you always know, no, I'm going to go, when I heal, I'm going to go back in and lace up the boots and go again? Yeah, I mean, I was like, I mean, it, it's the, the neck too strong. I mean, I'm going around, it, 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 if, it, if it's not going to come out after just walking around and being ridiculously negligent with my neck, I think I'll be fine. Sure, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Sure. All right. Well, we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk more in depth about your wrestling um, career at the moment and what, how you're pursuing wrestling, how it's going. I want to kind of circle back to the beginnings. Um, what area did you grow up in, and and what was family like growing up? Um, I mean, I've been uh, all around a bit. It's all a bit tenuous. My whole family sitch. Uh, it's a little bit out of London, it mostly, and then. Labrador Grove. Right. Um, yeah. So mostly Labrador Grove? Yeah, but like, you know, lived out of London as well. Sure. And, uh... Big family, or...? Eh, uh, well, yeah, like, uh, uh... I mean, I got, like... Uh, what was it like? Like, four brothers, two sisters, but then, like, you know... Two of the brothers, like, you know, dad's, um, like, side of there, like, in Australia. Okay. And then I got, like, you know, my sisters who were, like, who've, like, a different dad, and then my other two brothers. Sure. But, yeah, it's fucking, it's just fucking, my brothers that live in Australia are flat earthers, so it's, 
it's, it's an interesting uh, relationship with them because it's just like, I don't know how to talk to someone that dumb. Because <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just hard because they're like, no, the world's flat. And you're like, and you're like, bruv, what does right. the day look like to you? And they're like, oh, it's nighttime. It's the middle of the day here. How is it flat? Yeah. Explain these things to me. And then they do, oh, you've got too much Eurocentric education. And then I just bang my head against the wall sure. and try to like forget. So, you, so, it's easy to, so it's kind of easy to say that it's not like you don't get on with them, but there's not really much of a common ground no, with well, that side of the family. No, no, no. Yeah, it's, I don't know. And then was music and entertainment something that was like, are you just, were you like the lone wolf when it comes to like following like music and pursuing what you want to do for a living? Or did that come from any other family members that could have influenced that? Um, you know, um, take your time, by the way. Well, actually, <laughs> you know, with that, it's like fucking. You you heard of um. What are they called? What are they called? Creatures of Habit. Yeah. But there's a dude in there, Sean Penn. Yeah. I know that dude from like, I like, when we were like 12 or something. Right. I've known that like 11. Right, right. And so he was always rapping. And like he had decks at his yard and stuff. And like him and some other bread, they always used to, they were always rapping. I never rapped. I would just sort of like go around and just listen to, you know, they'd, they'd always be freestyling on the fucking decks. Just like, you know, remember just fucking calling like the tape demos. Tape. Remember that, kids? Tape. Cassette tape. <laughs> yeah. So those tape demos. And then, like, when another, uh, and then another one of our pals, Ashton, who's, like, passed away, he was just, like, I think I was just rapping. But he's, like, you should try rapping. You should, you know what I mean? So I was, like, maybe I will. So just, you know, write some dead bars. You know, and then next time they pulled out, like, the decks and they did, like, the little jam session, you know, you hop in and you go, yeah, that was sick. Looking back, it's probably some of the worst bars. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of your life? Ever. <laughs> ever. But I was like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that, that's. Who were your uh, rapping gods growing up? Who were your star? Who were the influences? Um, well, Redman. Yeah. I 100%. think I, I, I could tell you, you love Redman. Redman, that's it. Um, I was one of the best to ever do it. Oh, it's one of the greatest. Um, and I was like Cypress. I was like, I'd, like growing up, it was this, lots of like Ice Cube, Redman, and Cypress Hill. Like those are like the main ones, and then Big Pun. Big yeah. Pun was always my thing. And, and, like, and the UK? Yeah. Um, who was at the time? Fucking. I was always like, I, cause uh, mostly fucking Sean had all the stuff. So it was like you know, Skinny Man was always dope. Mm -hmm. uh, Rodney P and fucking Skits. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Clash. Yeah. Uh, Maestro, Maestro. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've, you've gotten to, um, so when did you, how was that, so when did you, when you started pursuing music and you you had an album called Running With Scissors back mm. in. That was, yeah, that was the one I did with Simon Jr. With Simon Jr., yes, that's right, you and Simon yeah, Jr. Yeah, yeah. Like the money. <laughs> how was that, when was that, that process like? That was good, I mean, yeah, it was, it was in a tenuous location, which, uh, it was quite stressful, but it was it was a it was a it was a good process. Um, um, Cause I rarely have done a chance to just work with like a producer on just like like one project. Yeah. But so that that's always that's always fun. Want to do more of that. Who who's some of your favorite like collaborations that you worked? On? I know you've done some with Snips, yeah. Rude, Rude Adams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you do something with Skeptic? Last Skeptic. Yeah, 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 like yeah, 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 a couple of tracks. Um, yeah. Some guy, some yeah, guy, some yeah. Guys, yeah, he's always sick. And fuck, um, Cuckoo, uh, DJ Cuckoo's always yeah. got sick beats. But um, collaboration wise, I mean, rap wise, it's like probably Cactus Carino and Verb T. Yes, Verb T, big up the Verb T, yeah, man. Big up Jeez, Verb T. Yeah. He's, got, he's produced one of the tracks on my new album, actually. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, okay, and then we met at Professor Green's launch party, which was in, I believe, 2009 when we met. Mm. Yeah, I fucking hell time. And you, you came up to me and you were like, oh, Skeen? You like, I, had, I had a song at the time called Skeen and you, you showed me love. But we actually, it was funny because we met and then we kind of rolled into the party together. Mm -hmm. But you already had a relationship with Pro Green. You mm. and Pro Green were 
tight at the time. Mm -hmm. um, is that a still a? Oh, wait, no, he's he's off. Uh, he's we we haven't, we don't really chat. There's nothing. It's all good, but you know, he's, yeah, uh, he's in a different things. Is yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just, Distant. I'm, I'm out. I'm out here in the in the underground in the dirt. <laughs> I'm out here in the sewers. Son. <laughs> but I remember that launch party was fun because there was like unlimited. <laughs> there was like unlimited alcohol. Oh, uh, that's yeah, that's always. We all dangerous. got merry. We all drunk. We were just rapping all the songs. The DJ was killing it. Yeah. Uh, I remember that very well. That was a, a trailer really park. Labra Grove trailer park. It's, yeah. It was an interesting one. When my pal, when my pals, when my pals like when he drove us in. He drove his car and he drove into the into the actual proper park, like into like you know the site. And we remember being sat in the back going, "We can't park here." And he's like, "No, it'll be fine." And the people start coming out of their caravans like, "Yeah, we can't park here." <laughs> you were in the back of one of Pro Green's SB oh, yeah, 64s, yeah, yeah. right back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, um, just I, have to, I, I appear in a lot of it, just in the back. I would say it, it, I forget like one day in the future. There'll be it'll be like people will be looking for articles and I'll just be I'll just be popping up in the back like oh this guy's a time traveler just like you know there's you know like when uh like in Fast and Furious yeah. still on Fast and Furious you'll see me <laughs> <laughs> just you be one of the cast members in the back you just gotta look closely uh, in the cameos you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. um but yeah with that with your transition with music you know I felt like. There was a lot of input, a lot of, you put a lot of stuff out at one point, but there was a, there was a time where you kind of just, no, I wouldn't say you stopped, because you've always, if you look back at the, of, of your videos and your music throughout the years, you kind of always, always oh, relatively put something out here and like, if, if it was like one year or one year out or whatever. Mm -hmm. But was there a lot of, what were you going through at the time when you were focusing on music? Before you did any wrestling, and you were just focused on music back in the day, was there stuff in your life that you were going through that might have been a bit difficult to kind of want to keep pushing or? Yeah, well, it was like, like the whole like my housing situation was all about so it was, it, my mental health and my housing was all a bit right up in it it's just you know all a bit i want to say loose did it say loosey goosey maybe it just just wasn't i was it wasn't i wasn't like like hitting like at all cylinders sort of thing like sure. that and when you say mental health what what do you what kind of things were you do you want to discuss what things you were going through at the time? I mean, yeah, I guess. Uh, just, uh, you know, I mean, I, start, I, I deal with fucking, I'm depressed. I get, I'm Depression. a depressed dude. Yeah. But, yeah. like, you know, it's, it, at that point, it was just like a full blown, just like, pit of depression, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just like, I looked into the void and then I blinked and then. <laughs> <whew>. <laughs> and then it was like, whew. You've always been like that. I felt like that's one thing you and I really got on with. We, we, we always had this like little outlook of life where it, it, it's kind of borderline dark, but we make <laughs> <laughs> but we make like comedy. I, mean, I think that's something all artists do. Mm -hmm. A bit self-deprivation. Um, maybe some things may not be going well in our lives, but we would mask it with humour. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of resonates and translates to your kind of style of writing and music and also what you kind of portray in videos. You're not over the top with the comedy either. You're, kind of, you're very much yourself. Even what I love about you as well, K.O., is you're yourself mm. no matter what the situation is. So even with the wrestling stuff, you're not really playing the gimmick because mm. I know you. Mm. You're being K.O. Mm. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Maybe this K.O. dial to 100, but, but um, did you have... Where did you learn to kind of like battle and combat negativity with humour? Is that something that was always within the family or is that something you just had to find for yourself? Yeah, I'd say my, my like, because, uh, yeah, I reckon my brother, like my brothers, they were, yeah. I mean, for fun, we just punch each other and throw each other through things. So it's like, it's, that's just hilarious <laughs> to me. We had a game called Get in the Box and Put Knives in It. So it's just, What's it called? You get, get in, the in the box and put, you put knives in it. It was like it's like the magic box, but it was just a, a normal box, and we just put knives in it. I can't believe it. And I remember like, we used to put what? we put the youngest in first, and then if he survived, the yeah, the night hop in, and then you just be there. I got pictures of it. It's just me like a hand popping out of a box, and there's just a bunch of blades in there. And I think like did you ever get caught? Nah, it got close one time. My brother put in a bread knife. <laughs> <laughs> just, Bro, brotherly love. <laughs> we just, and then you know, there was also we had a bucket that you could kick, you get in, and you kick people downstairs. Right. So, you know, just you just find humour in dumb stuff. 
and then you know whenever and then when, you know when everything's just burning then at least you're like ah oh, because you can't, if you can't laugh at something, what can you do? I mean, all you're going to do is just, like, cry in the dark and just start... <laughs> yeah. And nobody wants to do that. No! Uh, not even Batman. No, nah, not, not even, even Batman. Batman. I, but then the Batman, <laughs> Batman doesn't even laugh. He's just, yeah, he just... He doesn't even cry either. No. Nah, <laughs> he, he just sta- sits there in the dark, staring at a wall, not blinking. <laughs> and the bat flies past. Yeah, he's like, vengeance. Okay, um... You released you released a project recently, Liability Jones. Oh yeah, the EP, yeah, yeah. EP, yeah. yeah. Um, some some good stuff, and it's good Thank to you. hear you back. Mm. I say back because you for you you're probably thinking, well. Yeah, I had the Liability Jones mixtape before that. Yeah, and you, and for you you're probably thinking, well, I ain't really gone anywhere, but Mm-mm-mm. but um, it's good to see that you you, you know you're active, you evolved, and you're active again. What stuff are you working on now? Um, well, I just finished. I'm just getting the artwork back for the album. What fuck am I doing? That's the name of That's the, the yes album. Fuck am I doing? Yeah, because I was like, it's as you know, <laughs> times have passed, and I'm just like, the fuck, fuck am, am I, I doing? doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's brilliant. Um, keeping it real, bro. Yeah, so I just got off from that. Um, anyone, anyone, you working with anybody you're special on that? Yeah, well, it's, that's pretty stacked because I got, you know, um, Michael Parkinson. Michael Parkinson, yeah, bigger Michael, Michael Parkinson. Yeah, uh, Michael Parkinson. We'd love to get him on the show one day. Hopefully, we'll, we'll sort something. Um, some guy's got another track on there. Some guy, yeah. Um, Ferb T's got like yeah one of the tracks on there. Um, Cuckoo's back again. Um, I'm just, I'm just gonna be snip. That's the track with snips. Snips, snips yeah, is on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know I got my boy Reg on there and Cactus Carino. And it's, you know, it's like, it's like 13 tracks, unlucky number, because I subconsciously was like going, yeah, 13, yeah, that's me. And uh, yeah, hopefully dropping that in April. Come on, man, I'm looking forward to that, man. Um, Before we dive into your wrestling, I want to mention a, a fun memory I have of you. And it's a shame you and I have never actually collaborated. We, we, we need to talk about that. But um, We did record something. We recorded it something. Never, it never it finished. Never came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's true, actually. We'll, we'll have to revisit stuff. We'll, we'll talk. We'll do that. But one of my fun memories of you in, when I was pursuing music full time and trying to push to be a music star myself was when I, I asked if you could help me. Uh, I had a performance in Yo Yo's oh, yeah, in Nan yeah. Hill. Is it Art Fair? In Nan Hill? Art? Uh, Arts Club. Art Club, yeah. What, what is wrong with me? At the Nan Hill Arts Club, and it was yourself, big up to Aaron Jaunty, mm. and we learned the, the, the time. More stay in the time. More stay in the time routine. And we came out to Prince, Baby, I'm a Star. We did the Morris Day time. And it went off. People loved it, man. And then I think we did it another, another couple of times at other shows. I can't remember now. And I think, I, and then I did one with the elaborate one with the, in the mirror and all that stuff. But if you look back at the Ready to Light video, which did quite well. That was a dope video. You in the back doing the skanks. And, um, you know, we had some good times back then. Mm-hmm. Had some good times. But anyway, let's talk about wrestling, man. So you made this transition, you know, from music. And you said, you know what, I'm going to also now... Try my, try my hand in wrestling. Do you remember your first debut match? Mm, 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 mm. The one that wasn't a rumble, I think was a triple threat. Right. And that mm. was before the injury? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and who was in, who in the ring with? Shit, I gotta stop smoking so much weed. Keep that. <laughs> <laughs> um, shit. Are those guys still wrestling today? Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I'm not sure if they do. Um, man, I need to really fucking go check that. Ah, oh, don't worry, don't worry. You can move on. I, <laughs> so it was a triple threat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And did you learn quickly, like, man, this is not easy? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I stink. Yeah. I stink. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's a, yeah, it's a... I gotta work with cardio. I gotta... Is cardio, yeah. the, is cardio the biggest obstacle? Oh, yeah, cardio is a killer. Because uh, obviously you can go gym and you can pump weights and you can get strong. That's not a problem. And you'll be able to lift people and do all these, execute these moves. But I guess, I guess a lot of people trip over the cardio bit. Yeah, they could get, you know, you can blow up really fast. You see all these wrestlers who have been professional wrestlers for years mm. go away, 
come back because they become movie stars and whatnot, mm. and then they're struggling to breathe in the first two minutes. The Brahma degenerate smoker and a habitual drinker. Yeah. Cardio is always an uphill battle for me. Sure. And so wrestling cardio is hell for me. But I'm getting better with it. Like I remember, I remember like the early stuff, like early ones, just after like a small match, just being like, oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna, you get, and you get, you get back, and then people ask you questions like, no, 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 stop talking to me. Just let me. Yeah. All I want is that. Like, going, how was your match? I don't care. Just let me breathe. Yeah. Yeah. Let me breathe. But no, no, no. Now I'm fine. Now I'm. Now I'm. Now I'm just like. Now I just. Now. Now I can hit a blunt and then still go do it. And be, and, be, and be like and still be alive afterwards. Well, I had the I had the the honor and privilege to watch you live um, in Hackney Wick Wrestling. Uh, I think back in November, I believe. I think it was back in November. You had a show in November, in um, near Hackney Central in. Yeah, yeah, Hackney Wick, Hackney uh, Colour Factory. Colour Factory, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Um, you were brilliant, man. Thank I loved it, man. You had a good, you had a good reception as well. People were cheering for you. Yeah, the, the Hackney Wick Wrestling is, um, it's a, it's sick. The vibe is crazy. Yeah, it's it is. just like good crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's up, amped, full of energy from start to finish. That's a good crowd to wrestle for, man. That's one of the things because when you, you know, you know, when you're, well, when you're like me and very mid to lowly unsuccessful rapper. <laughs> It's a, the, you, when you get like the response that you get is so vastly different in a wrestling ring than it is like at a gig. So you go, you know, you go to a gig, you kill it, you're like, but sick, sick, you know, yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 people are like, yeah. You go to wrestling, yeah, okay. People like to your name, people are like loud, and you're like, this is what I like. <laughs> yeah, I feel like with music, it, there's this thing where like when you try to entertain a crowd, then it's like what you got for me, kind of. It's that kind of vibe. It's like, especially they haven't heard of you. Go on. Like, yeah, go on. Show me what you got. Oh, is that it? With, if somebody's paying their money to watch a wrestling event, they they want to see good action. They want to see good fun. And yeah. They yeah. Wouldn't, obviously, some wrestling fans can be cruel and will tell you about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's rarely that it's rare that they wouldn't support what you're doing because they're fans of what you're doing mm. and they probably respect what you're doing. I mean, yeah. Body on the I mean, as long as you don't go out there and stink. You're gonna get a good response, but like, yeah, no, you you can you can go out and kill it. Like, but even that, even if people are feeling it, it just feels like it, like in wrestling shows they feel it just a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. and that that's it's addictive. Pumping in my veins. Ko, Goldberg, Roman Reigns, Rhino, mm. Edge. Who has the best fair in the business? I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good spare on you, man. <laughs> I see you're doing spares, but you're catching people through ropes and stuff, man. Oh, I want to. Spearing's so fun because you, you could do it anywhere. You could be, you could, you could be at a shop, see someone you don't like, spear him. I have to admit, you did a spear when I saw you in the Hackney Mix show. I, I, I thought you got up like it was nothing and you were fine. But when you speared somebody, I thought you like I, I could have sworn your head landed f head first into that canvas. And I was like, is your are you? Right? I was like, but you got up and you were fine. Like, um, is it serious? Is it is it risky doing a spear? Or what is the most riskiest move that you can you can execute that can really cause damage to yourself? Um, finger poker doom. The finger poker. Doom? Yeah, yeah, that's why they don't use it much. Yeah, that's why. It's <laughs> yes, yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why they, 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 they hated Hogan for that. Yeah, they hate. You know what I mean? No, just anything where it's just like, it's like anything impact in the turnbuckle, I guess, isn't it? Right. Say. I took a Death Valley driver in the in the, oh, in the corner. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Jesus it's in the Christ. corner. That was fun. And then great, for those who don't know what a Death Valley driver is, can you explain? It's like, you just so fucking, it's like they, they yeah. lift you up on, yeah, the, on, on the, the shoulders. and then you just go <laughs> bam <laughs> so onto a turnbuckle. Yeah, into the corner. And um, is that the hard? The, the, the apron is the hardest part. Oh, yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. So if you get slammed, then you you got you took a power bomb on the apron once. I could have sworn. And on your back, maybe. No, nah, that was someone else. No, that was probably someone else. Yeah, yeah, that was someone but, else. But, but, but if that would that'd be big. That'd be big. Because you were there for the Oku. I was. Maybe, so I think oh, it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just blurred everything into you. <laughs> All the wrestlers are KO. Sick. Who were your from your favorite fond of memories of wrestling? Who were your favorite wrestlers growing up? Um, I I I liked Stone Cold and Scotty Too Hot. I was. I, you liked Stone Cold. Yeah. And Scotty. Yo, I always play with Scotty too, are you on the on the PlayStation? Because I like I like the worm. Yeah. <laughs> what 
was your favorite. <laughs> but Stone Cold, would you say, is your kind of yeah, 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 yeah. And, but yeah, no, I just, I, I, I don't know why I liked them too, cool, but I just did. Especially with Rikishi, I was just like, yep, yeah, I'm in. What, what white boys are do rags? Sure, yeah, cool. What this spiky blonde hair, the cut off? Yeah, love it, love it. PlayStation. Oh, okay. <laughs> any any um, dream matches that you've got for yourself? Any like any wrestlers that you see right now in UK or even in America that you're watching their work and you're like, okay, I'll love to wrestle this guy one day. I'd love to be good enough to like face Eddie Kingston. Big up, that'd be good. And I'd love to just like get in a promo <laughs> with Enzo. <laughs> Enzo Amore. Amore. Yeah. That's, probably, that's probably more possible than you think. Yeah. Because he'll probably come and do something. I don't know if he's Face wrestling. me, Enzo. Feed me, Enzo. Yeah, call him out. Come on. That, that's probably more of a possibility than you mm. think. I wouldn't be surprised if he does some shows in England and maybe you never know. That's why I, I, I like Enzo. People go, I just... He was a good mic talker, man. It's, I'm, I'm, I'll give my own riff a bit. You want, you want your five-star classics? You want your good batches? You want your 30 minutes? Also? Not me. Uh-uh. I want to... Uh, 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 me. Uh, big, big I just want to chat shit. <laughs> I want to chat shit and get put through tables. <laughs> Perfect. Um, what about the, 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 the art of cutting a promo? Mm. Uh, is that something that you're working on as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. How are you finding that? Um, just, yeah, just, uh, like, researching, like, you know, real, like, the classic talkers, lots of Steve Regal and shit like that, um, because what I'm doing with, like, Hustle as well, we got, like, this whole, like, course where we're just, like, you know, got tape study and, like, promo study and stuff like that, so, like, every week it's, like, a new promo, new match, sort of thing like that, sure. constantly just analysing it, just, um, recording joints, um, it's, 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 it's fucking, it's great. It's just it's some when, when motherfuckers like real good at it, and you see them, and it's like, like oh shit, these motherfuckers like, spit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, my po my boy Tate Mayfair's just dropped one recently, calling out Will Osprey, and that promo is cold. Okay. That that is cold. So then, two of them in the program together. So? Who knows? I don't know, but it's a. Uh, that would that would that be uh, that be money, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I fuck with that. Do you have a new fan of respect? So, for instance, if there's any wrestlers that you grew up watching you and you didn't really rate, mm. and now that you're pursuing wrestling yourself and you know what it's like to be in the ring, um, is there any you re any wrestlers from back then where you thought nah, that you have a new fan respect for, especially when it comes to in ring style and promo? Well, I mean, like anyone, like, if, like I mean, if you if you go in there and you've had to like you've had to do a match, I go like, I respect anyone who's done that because it's fucking hard. Yeah. Especially if like, yeah, it's, especially if like, you don't come from like, the business, like from like young, if you haven't been doing it since like, cause I got, into, I got trained late. Like, so I, I understand like, you know, when like models or whatever, just come in and just start wrestling. And you're like, and it's, you know, it's a bit fucking flaky, but it's like, hey, God, it's making for least give me a yeah. go. Yeah, you're getting a go, you're getting a go, yeah, 100%. You can't really knock that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not easy. It's one of the hardest professions to do, man. Yeah, man, it's just, it's just, you can't, it's, yeah, no. Every, like, I, I feel like it's, it's legit one of those ones where you can't really, like, full-blown shit on someone in, unless you've done it. Right. Like, at least a bit, because then it's just like, you just, you just I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, and I, and I still ain't done the whole shows at all the time, sort of like routine. So, and uh, if you, if you, if you, if you doing that, and still, I never, I didn't think you were like, you, you know, I mean, it, you know, it may not be the best wrestler or whatever, but you're still doing all of that. Eh, fucking hats off to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's what's some of your ambitions and and goals that you want to achieve being wrestling? What what kind of things you? You feel like, okay, I want to achieve this. Do you have like a bucket list of things? And do you have a bucket list of people that you want to wrestle? Yeah, well, yeah, there's... Like... So over here, I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, I want to be hustle champ, but I don't want to okay. face, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to face Rain because she's, she's, she's better at wrestling than me. And I'd have to, I'd have to, I'd have to, be despicable to win, and I, I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Go play the heel, man. 
nah, I just, I just, I just, I just feel like she'd out wrestle me, so I'd have to like, she doesn't even have any nuts I could kick, so it'd be, I'd have to think of a whole new game plan, and I don't know how. I like, so g- give me like six months, I have to like, draw up like a plan, an attack, and then maybe. But hustle, the hustle world heavyweight title is something that you're, yeah. you're focused on. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a home promotion. And, uh, you know, I want to... Oh, man. It'd be great to just, like... Oh, fucking... I feel just like... I'm just, I'm just going to say, like, really... Just, I, just, I don't know, I, I kind of just want to... I just want to get into, like, feuds with fucking dumb... Like, I, I, I don't want to call it, like, the acclaimed... I like, and... Um, right, like, yeah. you know, like, rap, like, rap battles <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. And that, I don't know, and just, um... Because you performed a few times, you've rapped a few times in his, in his wrestling yeah. shows, haven't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I've done that, but then, you know, I, I, I kind of, I don't know. It's, okay. it's, it's just... Um, well, just stick to you winning it, winning it yeah. anyway, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I think that's what every wrestler should be aspiring to achieve, you know, the, the big, the reach the mountain top in the, whatever promotion they're working for. So I yeah. definitely wish you luck on that, man. I wish you, and I wish you luck on your wrestling career, my bro. I think you're going to absolutely kill it. No, yeah. Keep going, my bro. I'm fucking, no, I'm just, I'm actually puzzled because it's, it's, I'm thinking like, it's, it feels like it's just Eddie Kingston, Enzo Mori. I just feel like I should find another, Big E, there we go. Okay. I want the free E's. You want Big E as well. well <laughs> If Biggie does return to the ring, hopefully he will. He's still, you know, recovering from that nick. Yeah, 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 yeah. If he ever does come Big back. Bigger plus Biggie. All right, well, we've got, we got some little quick rapid fire questions that I have, um, to, you know, sometimes with my guests on my podcast. This is a, a segment called uh, Favourite Things. So, okay, I'm going to fire some favourite things, some questions for you, and you let me Hit know me. Uh, your answer. So we'll start off with favourite opponent that you've wrestled so far. Rocco Garcia. That was quick. Fav- what is what uh, favorite month? What's your favorite month of the year? August. Favorite season of the year? Summer. Favorite color? Purple. Favorite animal? Hmm. 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 A lynx. A lynx. Okay. <laughs> favorite dessert. That's a tough one. At the moment, I'm addicted to lemon meringue pie. Okay. Favorite thing to do in your pastime? Well, my past lives. Past time. <laughs> just when you're chilling. Um, and your past lives, no. Drinking. Uh, favorite film? Oh, True Romance. Favorite rapper? Red Man. Uh, favorite subject? Me. <laughs> favorite favorite genre of music? Hip hop. Um, what else we can I could ask you? Favorite date. Favorite favorite relationship. Girlfriend. Nah, I could let's not ask you. Jennifer Lopez. My have you met my girlfriend? Oh, Jennifer, Lopez. Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> favorite place to grow up. Uh, Lever Grove. Favorite thing about wrestling? Yeah, the fucking aura. The feet, the vibe, yeah, the, the vibe, vibe, yeah, the yeah, atmosphere, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you get nervous? Never. All the time. I just, that's it. It's just, yeah, I don't know. No, yes. Maybe I don't know. I spend. I sp- I, try, I try to. St- I try to stay on like a baseline high, so you can't. I can't tell if my nerves are there. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Is this a, is, is 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 what you're doing now? Mm. Is this something that you never? Is this something that you've always dreamt of doing, or is this something that just? No, I, I want. I, I like. To be fair, like originally, I, w- I always wanted to be a comic book. I wanted to be a comic book writer. And then, you know, then rapping. So, but then it was like, mostly I've always wanted to be a rapper. And then wrestling has come like very late in my life. Yeah. And it's just like... Uh, obviously, but, and obviously, there was a time where you probably didn't think it was possible to do mm, mm, mm. Now you know that the door is... Yeah, 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 it's feasible. Like, if I had known in like my early 20s, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, you can't actually train in wrestling. If I, I had all other bullshit going on, 
That would have been sick, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And last favourite question. Who's your favourite? Because you said you, were, you wanted to be a comic book writer. Mm. Who's your favourite heroes in comic book strips? And Man. If I'd, if, I'd, if I'd said this like 15 years ago, I'd be niche. But now I'm just, gene- it's a Deadpool. So I'm just generic now. It's just, he was my favourite yeah, character. I felt like you were into Deadpool when it, when it wasn't cool to be into Deadpool. Yeah, but now it's just like, now, now, I, need, now I need to find a new one. You were in the club early, that's what it was. Yeah, now, now, now everyone kicked me out of the club. And I'm, just, <laughs> and I'm, I'm staring from outside the window like a cat pouring at a door going, let me in. I want to enjoy are it you, again. Are you looking forward to the, the third... Uh, film of Deadpool. I'm not. I'm not looking forward to any comic book movies anymore. Are you? Are you tired of it now? Yeah. Do you think they've ever done it? They're just. They. 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 they everything's like giant stakes, but then no actual like meaning to it. It's yeah. all just like bland yeah. set pieces. Oh, now the world's gonna blow up. Oh, now the moon is crashing into the earth, and there's a thousand alien monsters. Oh yeah. No. No. Listen. I. I get that. I think. I do think the market is. Is. is they're doing too much. It's like. You get a comic book movie every two months now, or a comic book series or something, and it's just. But if they made it small scale, like it's just like you have like a couple people like making a, attacking a building or something like that, and you just protect like do that, rather than not everything has to be the world is burning. I agree, I agree. Yeah, it's not like high, yeah, it's gonna change the universe. If yeah. this happens. you can just do a thing where you stop a petty crime criminal. Or, and the, you know, do you know what I mean? Let's think of new ways of telling stories. A serial killer is plaguing the city. Yeah. You got to chase him down. Yeah. That's why Batman will always win. Mm. Apart from what happened recently. But. Mm. Well, thank you for joining me, Kevin. No, thanks for having me, dog. Listen, bro. Listen, I, I just want you to know, man. I'm proud of what you're doing. Keep doing. I see you busting your busting your ass um, every day to get better and better. And I, I'm I'm confident you will get better and better. And as your confidence grows in that field, I can see you, your, 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 what I know of you and your, your charisma and your personality will shine ultimately through in that profession. So keep going. I wish you all the best. And I'll be rooting from the sidelines, man. Oh, I appreciate you're that. Maybe from the nosebleeds. Well, yeah, yeah, you, you'll get to a point where you won't remember me anymore. You just, hey, let's go. I mean, depending Who's how. that guy? I mean, depending how drunk I am at the time, I could forget anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, can, <laughs> where can people find you if they want People who might have known you for your wrestling and didn't know that you were doing music before, which I'm sure they would. But A-O-K-O.com. A-Y-O-K-A-O.com. And that's all music. Everything and you've got there. new music coming. And new you've music still got coming. new shows that's going to be a part of, of, of Hackney Wick Wrestling. March 30th. Yep. Hackney Wick Wrestling. Uh, Rain vs. Nina Samuels. Battle Royal. I'm throwing cats out. Ow! Take it, just, I'm going to pull people into the ring. Just to throw them out the ring. Pull them into the ring. Just throw them out again. I'll slide underneath the ring, come back in. I'm still legal. Throw him out of the ring. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining me, my man. It's been KO. Watch him stuff at Hackney Rick Wrestling. Up and coming wrestler. Big, big, big. And very talented rapper too. So check out his new music. And I make a mean chili. So ladies. <laughs>